Welcome to the summit, What is the Unknown? And I can now introduce you to Andre Harvey. Welcome. Lovely to be with you. Lovely. Thank you. And it's lovely that you are here. And uh, you're a writer, you're a poet, you're a mystical teacher. And yeah, you're the founder of the Institute for Sacred Activism. Yes. Yeah. And that's what you're all about. Like you're the mystical part of like the inner work, but you're also doing the outer work, you could say. Yes. Yeah. I, don't, I believe they go together. I don't believe that you can have a true understanding of the divine without being activated to do everything you can help. Because we're in a terrifying situation. We're in an apocalyptic situation. Everything is falling apart. The world is burning. But there's a great force on the earth. And the force is the force of sacred activism, of a deep putting into action of profound compassion and love and understanding. So there is hope, but we have to move urgently now. Yeah. And that's also like you've written f at least 40 books and yes. some of your books point to the mystical part or the, the unknown of what we are. And then yes, many of your later books are more, uh, about this love in action, you could say activism in the world. They're always about both, because I don't believe that you can rise to the challenge of what we have created without having a profound transformation and without entering into the great gift that everyone is given, the gift of divine consciousness. We're born with divine consciousness. And the task of life is to experience it and then get going in the world with its laws of truth and compassion and generosity of spirit. Yeah. And so now the, the subject of this summit is what is the unknown? So I'll just ask you that. What is the unknown? In the ultimate sense, the unknown is the divine itself. The divine is a stupendous mystery and it is a mystery that we are here to experience more and more of through prayer and meditation and mystical practice and compassionate action. What the unknown is, is the part of ourselves that our culture doesn't encourage us to experience. But the ancient mystical systems have known the unknown. And so my work has been to be initiated into all the major mystical systems, and now to give to the human race at its moment of the deepest danger, the distilled truth of what we need to do to really come into the majesty and purity and grandeur and power of our essential being. So while a part of the divine will always remain unknown, because it's the divine, you'll never know why it's doing what it's doing. What you can know is very extraordinary. And we have tremendous guides throughout history to what can be known. And what can be known is the presence inside ourselves as our true selves of divine consciousness. And as you take the mystical path with great seriousness and authenticity, many, many extraordinary experiences will be given you to wake you up to the vastness of your essential consciousness. And when that waking up takes place, all kinds of knowing directly without separation will also take place and you'll be filled with the knowledge you never understood before you'll be your heart will be expanded and become the organ of a passion that you never lived before and eventually your whole body will start to wake up to this secret presence within it of divine power divine beauty divine presence it's amazing and that is what my whole work is about, is really, I've been on this journey for a very long time. And through the grace of my great teachers and the grace of the divine itself, 
there are many things I know, but I also know that there are many things I can never know. And what's so beautiful about never knowing is that you constantly yearn to know more. And the more you yearn to know, the more grace will give you while always showing you that there are things that you will never be able to understand. So that's the journey. Yeah, yeah we'll probably never understand the big picture. And how could we? We're not God. But what we can understand is that we're not too with God. The amazing knowledge that comes on the mystical path is a knowledge that your divine consciousness is a light drop in a great ocean of light. You will never understand completely how the ocean works and what it's doing, but you will know that you are fundamentally connected to it. And you'll also know that if you stay humble, if you stay loving God, if you stay adoring the presence, if you stay doing the work, what you need to know will be fed you. This is the miracle of the mystical path. Yeah. And so we are like the drop in the ocean, but we also, the ocean is also in the drop. Yes, but that's a very high level of realization. That takes dying into life because on the mystical path, you can learn a great deal in the initial stages. And that's very inspiring. You can even see the divine light in the initial stages, the white light the great white light that is manifesting all of the worlds. But you can't really enter into the ocean itself or begin to become the ocean until you've died to your personal self. And this is why in the great mystical traditions, they talk of a great ordeal at the later stages of the path in which you're stripped of your personal self so that the glory of the whole ocean can be reflected magically and amazingly in your own divine drop. But that's a very high stage. That's enlightenment. And not many people throughout history have really been in that state. But just glimpsing that state is itself the most amazing experience. Yeah. And how come we not all just be that? Like, why is it only few that that's actually where the whole ocean is in the drop or that is enlightened or why? Well, I think it's a question of authenticity and sincerity. Not many people are brave enough to go through all of the different transformations that are needed to die into life. Most people undertake the spiritual path because they want peace of mind or they want to know a bit more. But when the mystical cast gets really truthful and really fierce, a lot of people give up because it takes everything to become everything. And that takes a level of courage, a level of awareness, a level of passion that very few people are capable of. But some people are, and there are people on the earth at this moment who are, and we need to listen to them. The Dalai Lama is an example of someone who has, who has become one with the ocean. And when he speaks, he speaks with the tenderness, but with the clarity too, of somebody who really does know the truth of existence. We need, how also, you know, we're living in a culture which doesn't encourage this kind of true search. It's a culture that is stresses the most banal kinds of achievement and money and power and sex, drugs, rock and roll. It's an entirely superficial culture riddled with illusion and fantasy. And the authentic mystical transmission is very endangered at this time because we also have a completely fake spirituality out there, a new age spirituality, which is materialistic and very limited. My work and the work of the other serious mystical teachers on the planet is to bring back the authentic path with all of its passion and all of its danger and all of its ordeals and all of its understanding so that people can have a chance at this moment of really doing the serious 
dying into life that's required. Yeah, and part of the dying isn't that you could say you're dying to the the false selves or the identities you think you are. Right. And so you're dying to separation. You're dying to anything that separates you from anything, from anything that's happening. Everything is happening inside you, inside the vast awareness that you are. But in order to experience that, you have to have your illusion shattered about separation. You have to have also at a certain stage in the path, in the dark night, your own fantasy of yourself be completely incinerated so that you can be born into this much vaster consciousness. And that's a very painful process. It's a process that can drive you mad, can kill you. But if you are able to... Yes, absolutely. Kill you in the wrong way. But now we're in a global dark night in which it's absolutely essential that there are people on the earth who are prepared to die into life to be of help to others because the whole humanity now is threatened by death, by extinction. So what I'm saying to people is die before you die so that you can live in this vast consciousness so that you can help others so you can guide others and so you can encourage others to really go deep into the depths of divine consciousness and start acting from that conscious urgently because the whole future of humanity now depends upon it yeah and how do you do that? I mean, I've, I've been reading some of your books, uh, among others. So you, you have the hope right there that you can show. Yes. Yeah. The hope. Well, if you read the hope, the first important thing is to realize that the mystics are not lying to you when they say that you are that, you are secretly divine. That's the first thing. And that takes a great leap of courage because we're living in a culture which largely denies that truth. So you have to take that leap of courage and believe. That's the first thing. The second thing is that you have to humble up and realize you know nothing at the level that you are about this great everything. The third is that you need to develop a very rigorous, relentless, calm, simple practice that will clean the mirror of your heart so that into your heart can be flashed the revelation of who you really are. And the most powerful practice for this era, all the mystics know, is the saying of the name of God by whatever name you worship God. It doesn't matter what name it is, but say it in the core of your heart with devotion and something amazing slowly will be revealed to you. Then you have to have a real map of the stages. And this is what I, my life has been dedicated to, to giving people a map of the different stages of the evolution of divine consciousness, because if you start thinking when your first experiences happen that you're already awake, you limit the evolution that's possible. So the great glory of our humanity is the great mystical systems that have been developed in the major religious systems. And what I've done is to try and bring together all of their deepest insights so that there is a map available for those who truly want to incarnate and embody their divine consciousness. So if you do those four things, you have a real chance because there's a tremendous amount of grace flowing to humanity now because the divine knows that humanity is in this terrible space of stupidity and cruelty and bewilderment and madness, really. But there is a tremendous grace available to anybody who sincerely wants to open to their divine truth. So let's go for it. It's our last hope. It's our best hope and our last hope. Hmm. Yeah, and, and you also write about that in, in another book, a Radical Regeneration, and about a, right. a new human being birthed. Yes. What's that uh, about? Well, this is a very profound and strange and but very real vision that is not mine alone. It's been given to us by the great evolutionary mystics of humanity. 
And what they've all said for many centuries now is that humanity would come to a moment when its mistakes and illusions would create a world crisis. And that, that world crisis would be a global dark night experience of the shattering of all illusions. And it would look like extinction. It would look like the end. But that its real meaning is to force as many people as possible into undertaking the mystical path so that the divine can transform us and create out of our disaster an amazing opportunity to birth a wholly new level of human possibility. And what they've all said is that the new human being will have an illumined mind, a mind that is in the service of the divine, an illumined heart that is in the service of divine compassion to all beings. And, and this is the incredible part, a reinvigorated, transformed body that is aware of the divine presence in every cell. We're going through a massive mutation process from one kind of humanity that is clearly proven its bankruptcy and its complete inability to do anything real about anything and is now in the middle of a death crisis. We're going from that humanity to an embodied divine humanity. And it's being offered to us this great transformation, but it will depend upon us because the divine can offer. But if we don't turn up in the relationship with this massive shift and do everything that we can with our minds and hearts and bodies and practice and deep, deep faith and deep, passionate, sacred action, we're going to die out. But if we do, enough of us do, then there's an extraordinary chance of the whole human experience being taken to another level. And at that level of divine embodiment, human beings will be gifted with the capacity to co-create with the divine, a wholly new way of being and doing everything on the earth. So it's worth striving for it in these increasingly impossible conditions. They're meant to get impossible because one kind of humanity is finished. It cannot work. And what the divine is doing is an, a massive, painful, extraordinary experiment to see if there are enough people on the earth who truly want humanity to survive and are prepared to do the inner work and the outer work to make that possible. And my whole life is dedicated to that and to helping people go forward with passionate commitment to mystical transformation put into real radical action yeah love in action <laughs> and so love because i know you also you like the word love right roomy like the word love, like love and love in action it sounds beautiful and and love is i i think that is what we are made of you know is you could say it's right but it's divine it isn't emotional love it's 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 not emotional love it's not um what we normally think of as love. It's something much more intense. And really you can't love in the way that I'm asking people to love until you've experienced love itself through deep mystical experience. Because in deep mystical experience, you feel in a way that changes you forever, the unspeakable wild, holy power of the divine's love for you. And experiencing that awakens a passion in the core of your heart, which is deeper and richer and wilder and more focused than anything that you've ever experienced before. And then you work with that passion and over time it transforms you, rebirths you into your true self. And as that process goes forward, you're given all kinds of intellectual powers, powers of compassion, powers of prayer, powers of working on yourself and on the others that really help them evolve. So that's the kind of love I'm talking about. And that love demands real work. It demands real commitment to the real path. It's not something that it's something you're born with, but it's something that you need to evolve and develop 
in relationship with the great mystery of the great love that is creating everything and living in everything and organizing everything, sometimes in very frightening ways. Because yeah. the great love is, is both tender and very ferocious. Yeah, it's, it's like the opposites, right? The, the yin yang, right. the light, the dark. And that's also part of, we, we have to uh, work with our shadow, you could say, like, but yes. that's part of uh, opening up to all that we are, the light and yeah. the, that, that heart opening and just keep opening that, right? It seems like, to me, it seems like you can be open to everything, open to others, open to yourself, what comes up, don't deny it, but embrace it. And right, work with it, acknowledge it. It has wisdom to teach you, but don't be sucked into it either. So you have to develop what is called in the mystical path, witness consciousness. You have to know that there's a part of you that can watch everything, understand everything that you have to deal with, and also not be identified with it, but realize it's part of your human experience and accept it and make it conscious and then work on it. Ask for grace to transform it into light, into truth, into passionate desire to serve all beings. That is also, that's the, in a way, the most important work that we could be doing at this moment, because if we don't acknowledge our shadow, the shadow will have an orgy and destroy everything if we don't work with it. And the wonderful thing about the mystical path is that it gives you the strength to face what you couldn't face in your ego. It would be too terrible for the ego. But when you come to understand that you have available to you grace and this vast consciousness, then you can face anything in yourself through the grace of God and offer it up for transformation. That's an amazing discovery, which every human being is invited to make and must make at now. Yeah, and it's because what happens in all of us is humanity. We take things very personal, but it's all, all we humans have all kind of, you know, the whole spectrum of emotions, the whole, all kind of thoughts. It's, so it's, it's, it's like embracing that unknown, in a way it's unknown what we are and what right. we show up. It's unknown on both directions. It's unknown how much light we are actually one with, but it's also unknown how much dark we have and how much dark we keep going by the shadows that we don't want to acknowledge. So if you take the mystical path, you're going to have to open to both because both are divine. Both have divine meaning. The dark has a very deep divine meaning, which you have to uncover. Because one of the great powers of the dark is to blind you. So if you become more and more conscious of the darkness that has come to you through your childhood, through your karma, through your own addictions, then two things happen. You feel very much more compassionate for other people because you realize what they're secretly struggling with and why things are as bad as they are. But you also have, you're given more skillful means to deal with it because you, in understanding your own darkness, you understand others and become more compassionate, but also more skillful in helping others to get acquainted with that darkness and to work with it through grace so that they can be transformed. It's an amazing process. Yeah. And it's also non-dual, right? Because, yes. Yes. Because sometimes when I hear divine and grace, it can sound like it's something other than me. But right. Not, it's yeah. all, it's all you and you're everything dark and everything light is in you. And you, everything dark and everything light is being emanated by the unknowable mystery in a way that you'll never completely understand. But after a while, you come to understand that it's this mystery is working a great alchemy of transformation. And through the mystical systems and through the, the transpersonal psychological systems, such as Jung and others, were given tremendous tools to work in a non-dual way with the fullness of ourselves so that a much greater fullness of being can be born in us. Yeah, yeah, the because nothing way. is separate, right? It's all... Nothing is separate, no. Yeah. You're, in, you're implicated in, in the, all the horror 
of the world because until you've made your own horror conscious you don't know how much you're colluding with that darkness but the good news is that you're also implicated in all the glorious beauty of the light so you're both saint francis and hitler so you have to find a way to make your hitler conscious so that your francis can help hitler become conscious and transmute that hitler and learn everything that that hitler has to teach because the dark has a lot to teach about why people do what they do and then you have skillful means to help others rescue themselves from their own unacknowledged darkness and that's the work of the christ or the bodhisattva that's the work of those who are awake yeah and also what we all can do is really be honest with ourselves and really be open to yeah what shows up within us and and also out there right because life right. i think life is is the greatest teacher really yes it, it serves everything on a platter for us where where like we can embrace what happens in our lives and so it's like the inner and outer work you could say it's one and the same really yes there is no outer work it's all inner work the inner work needs to be one that embraces everything that happens and is aware that everything is happening for a meaning that may not be obvious to us but if we wait and if we work with it will come clear and then put that knowledge into action that's the way in which you complete your incarnation and become a living human divine being helping the birth of a new humanity in the middle of this exploding death yeah and because we do naturally yeah have compassion and empathy and and then also as humans we are very creative we can create because yes. we think and so it is it's beautiful that we can with our creativity we can care for one another and know what to do to care for one another it's and wonderful but we need to be very much more creative and very much more compassionate than we normally are because our creativity and our compassion are limited by our ego. It's when the ego is expanded to become one with the secret self that our true creativity and compassion come out. Because at the moment, human creativity is limited by a massively inadequate understanding of human consciousness. And human compassion is clearly drastically limited by selfishness, tribalism, greed, desire, ignorance. So the mystical path gives you, if you take it with sincerity, the strength to bear what you need to bear to transmute what is dark in you and expands your mind and your heart and your body so that you can become a true vehicle of divine consciousness and divine compassion in your own unique way. Yeah. And lastly because sometimes you know i hear there's no free will there's um everything is in harmony and complete and perfect as it is in the big picture right so uh, like from a human perspective it, it cannot be seen but in actuality it's all perfect as it is and then i'm looking at the world and i'm like no it's not perfect but that's from the maybe from this point or this dot in the universe it doesn't look like perfection no this is this is a major misunderstanding things at one level are already perfect but as a great mystic said they can always become more perfect <laughs> and the job of the human being is to undergo the great mystical transformation so that he or she can become an agent of that even greater perfection that can be born here the world is in terrible shape and it's an agony and a horror beyond imagining so it cannot be what god in god truly wants for humanity what god wants is the birth of a divine human race that's been the deep dream in the mind of god now the crisis has come that will if we allow it to shape us make us agents of that dream of god to birth a new human race so there is a kind of perfection about the crisis because it's so extreme that we'll either transfigure or die out. That's perfect. That's a perfect 
theorem. That's a perfect state. But the meaning of the crisis is to go deeper, far, far deeper into divine consciousness so that we can become co-creators with God of the next level of the unfolding of the adventure. Yeah. And but then sometimes I was like, like co-creator, then it sounds like there is an individual me here that can co-create, you know, that then it's not. Well, not there, is a person, the, the, there is a unique. Each light drop is different and each human being has a unique contribution to make, but they cannot make that unique contribution when they're still in a fantasy of separation. But they can make it when they are not two with the one. So it's a great, another of the great paradoxes of the mystical path. You become more yourself when you become your true self. And when you become your true self, it's still you. But it's a huge you that's been created by God to do the great work that's coming through you. So the Dalai Lama is very intensely the Dalai Lama. His personality is enormously individual, but the individual in him and the vast human self have become one so that the individual becomes a lens through which the vast self can work on the world that's what's going on in the great mystical transformation it's a vast paradox it's hardly it's very difficult to express in human words but it isn't when you die into life life resurrects you as your essential unique human divine self and then the vast consciousness that you essentially are works with the gifts and passions of transformed passions of your human self to do massive work in the world it's a game yeah oh thank you so much andrew this is just wonderful and what's your website how can people get in touch with you andrewharvey.net there's a lot of stuff there a lot of free stuff i'd love it if you engage with it i do a lot of events please join me and Please, please, at this moment of the history of the world, when you might be tempted to despair and be paralyzed, understand that divine mercy is streaming towards you and through prayer and meditation and sacred action, you can truly discover who you essentially are. And that will bring you purpose and meaning and great joy and deep energy. This is what those who've undertaken the journey have had revealed to them and we're not lying to you we're inviting you to a tremendous feast oh thank you beautiful thank you bless you darling thank you for the work you're doing bless you yeah bless you <laughs> yeah